Mmm, that's a damn good soup. All I'm missing is the turtle. Nah, no, but what's up, guys? In all seriousness, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the turtle soup strategy. In my opinion, the strategy is a very, very good strategy. It's one of the ones that are up there because this strategy yields very high rewards with sort of minimal risk, right? But this strategy is going to consist of time and price aligning with each other. So if you guys have not watched that video, that's my previous video that I uploaded this week. So if you guys have not watched that video, make sure you guys go watch that video. I'll link it somewhere up here. So make sure you watch that video, then come back to this one to learn about the turtle soup strategy. And it's going to consist of SMT divergence as well. So if you have not seen that video as well, I have an SMT divergence video on my channel as well, explaining SMT divergence, the correlated pairs. So if you guys have not watched that video, um, go ahead and go watch that video and then come back to this video. Now, without further ado, let's get on the charts and show you what a turtle soup is now hold up let me finish my soup though real quick okay before we get on the charts all right guys real quick i wanted to come in here and add this clip into the video before we actually start the video because i realized that i left some important information out on this turtle soup video so that's the reason why you're seeing this cut right now and why i'm adding this clip in here before the actual video starts so before the video starts again i wanted to include this information in here so you guys aren't confused or whatever, but basically I'm just going to go over another um, example of a turtle soup real quick and what you guys need to look for. Another criteria that I mistakenly didn't add into the original video. So I'm going to add this clip into it. So what you want to look for in higher probable turtle soups is make sure on the higher time frames like the weekly and daily. If you are trying to trade like the one hour or four hour, look at the daily and weekly um, charts. And look for higher time frame PD arrays. Uh, PD arrays are pretty much like premium and discount arrays where price delivers to. For example, uh, PD arrays can consist of, for this example, it could be like a volume imbalance on the higher time frame. In this example, it's a weekly volume imbalance or in the form of buy side liquidity, like right here. That's what PD arrays are. So on your higher time frame charts, the higher probable turtle soups are going to occur in higher time frame PD arrays. And then you can start zooming in and finding your SMT divergence, making sure that time and price are correlated, all that good stuff. All right, so for this example, I'm just gonna show you really quick. Uh, we have a volume imbalance here on the NAS 100. This was uh, last week and it actually came up in here, swipe liquidity, and then it started to push down. So that was the high of the week there, right? It delivered to a higher time frame PD array how do you get your higher time frame PD array? You just pretty much get your Fibonacci or your gone box and you take it from the weekly swing high, which would be up here, and then the weekly swing low. So all this below this equilibrium right here is discount and above it is premium, right? Same thing right here. Um, we had NASDAQ deliver it to a higher time frame PD array. This was a turtle soup for this week and then it just came down, right? So if we come over here and look at this example right here, it delivered to a higher time frame PD array. So if we go down to the one hour, we could see here that it tapped the bottom of it, but then it came back up for Tuesday. And if you guys don't know, Tuesday and Wednesdays are when the highs and lows of the week usually occur. And that's when they usually form. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this came up as swept liquidity right? That's one of the criteria you guys need to look for. A turtle soup obviously is a liquidity sweep. Now it's actually in a higher time for PD array. This gray box is a weekly volume imbalance I just showed you a little bit ago. And this would be your turtle soup on the one hour. So if you're focusing on the one hour, make sure you're looking at like the four hour daily weekly. If you're looking at like the one minute, look at the 15 minute uh, PD arrays, right? And I'll show you a quick example as well, like on Euro USD here in a little bit that happened actually today. I'll show you an example. If you trade like the one minute or five minute, then you would want to look at like 15 minute, one hour, and even daily and weekly. Don't ever exclude out, like don't ever leave out the daily and weekly, right? Those are higher probable uh, PD arrays because they're on the highest time frames, right? Like daily and weekly. So this would be like your turtle soup here, liquidity sweep. And I'm sure you have an S&T divergence somewhere here in the lower time frames, And then it just starts coming back down, right? and it takes out the opposing liquidity. That's pretty much the uh, turtle soup strategy, but I will go more in depth into it and what criteria I personally look for for turtle soups. 
and that's coming up next. So make sure you guys watch through the whole video if you guys want to actually uh, get this strategy. But that's basically what it is in a nutshell. So before we actually do start the video, I promise this is the last clip. Um, I just wanted to show you guys real quick that the SMT divergence did occur here, right on the lower time frames. So uh, S&P made a higher high, NASDAQ did not follow through. So you could have just shorted it there or waited for um, obviously the indices kill zone to start because this was not during the indice kill zone. This actually happened outside of it. So uh, I probably wouldn't have took it because time and price wasn't aligning, but you still had it here nonetheless. As you guys could see on the one hour chart as well, you guys could have just shorted anywhere in this area during the New York kill zone or waited for market open and took a short somewhere in here. We actually have another turtle soup right over here, right? You actually had a second chance to get into another setup here, right? We had a swipe of liquidity right there. S&P did not follow through. And then we just came down for the rest of the week. That is pretty much the turtle soup. And we were in the higher time frame volume imbalance on uh, NASDAQ. Now on S&P 500, were we in a higher time frame PD array. Sorry for the mess here. Uh, we actually were for this day, right? On Tuesday, we were in a order block and we actually hit the 50% of that order block and did not close above it. So that is a higher time frame PD array, right? PD arrays, again, come in the form of liquidity, order blocks, breaker blocks, fair value gaps, um, volume imbalances and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get on to the video and the rest of the examples. So also, I wanted to show you a very quick example here. Like I said, I was on Euro USD that happened today. So we had relative equal highs, right? This was the start of the uh, candle. This is a Sunday opening relative equal highs right here. We had price come up above them after taking out these relative equal lows. So it attacked the opposing liquidity. And this was during the London kill zone and London open, right? We also had SMT divergence here between uh, Euro and GBP. So this was the turtle soup after purging these highs in London kill zone. So we actually had time and price aligning here and we had S&T divergence, sweep of liquidity. So you could have went short anywhere in this area right here. This was again during the London kill zone. And we actually had, if we go to the one hour, um, we were in this order block right here. We're also in another 15 minute order block right there that price kept tapping into, purged the highs and then came down and attacked the final opposing liquidity. So without further ado, let's get on to the rest of the video and the rest of the examples. Thank you guys for watching again. Love you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is a turtle soup? What criteria do we need to look for for it to qualify as a turtle soup? Okay, and I'm going to show you guys here an example with Euro USD and GBP USD. Now, before we get into it, we are going to be using S&T divergence, time and price, and liquidity sweep. Those are the three things that you kind of need to look for in a turtle soup. Now, I only use this concept or strategy on correlated pairs, like on indices, for example, S&P 500 and NASDAQ. For Forex, I use it in Euro USD, GBP USD. Now you could use the DXY for S&T divergence since those are correlated with Euro USD and GBP USD if you only trade one of those pairs. I personally trade both. I look at both of them, Euro USD and GBP USD, but I also look at the DXY chart as well. So let's get into what a turtle soup looks like. So basically what a turtle soup looks like is this right here, exactly what you're seeing right here. This is a turtle soup. Okay. Basically a liquidity sweep and then push down or a liquidity sweep down and then push up. It's basically what it is. But if you notice over here, this candle's high on Euro USD, and this candle's high on Euro USD over here. They don't match, right? These two are supposed to be correlated. And I bet you, if we go see DXY, we'll see some correlation between all of these. We'll see a discrepancy, right? Where one makes a higher high and the other one doesn't. That's SMT divergence, right? And I will show you guys here. Right there, there you go. Now we have a liquidity sweep on GBP USD. We have S and T divergence, and we also have time on our side. Now, if you guys haven't watched my time and price video, make sure you guys go watch that. So here we have entered the London kill zone. Again, London kill zone is from 2 AM Eastern standard time to 5 AM Eastern standard time. This is where we want to hunt for our setups. Remember 
So for me, 2 a.m. Eastern is 1 to 4, right? In this little pocket of time right here. We have a liquidity sweep on GBP, but we're not confirming that with Euro USD. So how do you tell if Euro USD isn't going to clear the high just like GBP USD did right here, right? Because some people are afraid to enter just off a simple liquidity sweep. But you have to understand that time and price are on your side, that time is on your side. You're in the London kill zone. You have a nice liquidity sweep. Euro USD is way, it's not too far off this high, but it's it's not reaching for it. It's not gonna reach for it since GBP USD just attacked that high. Now, for extra confirmation, let's go look at DXY and see what it did here on this day. Aha, so this is a DXY chart over here on the right. So if you look closely, we're in the London kill zone, right? When all this happens right here, as you can see, DXY is not reaching for that low. DXY just swept liquidity here. DXY is not going to come down to that low. That gives you extra confirmation when GBP makes a higher high or Euro USD makes a higher high. DXY is supposed to make a lower low. Okay. That is SMT divergence. Now, when you see GBP do this, a strong displacement candle, this might throw people off because they're going to be like, well, you just broke structure and GBP looks like it's just going to keep pushing up, right? For this liquidity. But you, what you guys have to understand as well, you guys have to have your higher time frame bias in check. Okay. So if we were to go on the higher time frame bias here, let's go on the daily and let's just focus on GBP really quick. So I could show you guys this, right? If we go all the way over here. So as you guys can see, uh, GBP cleared these equal highs. So we're looking for one of two things for price to consolidate to continue or price to consolidate to reverse and slightly pull back. Okay. Those are the only two things that are going to happen when you clear a higher time frame liquidity pool. Okay. So if we go back to the 15 minute and we come over here, you have time and price on your side. It's later in the week. You've already cleared your weekly objective, which were on GBP USD in this example, were relative equal highs on the daily chart on the higher time frame. Okay. Same thing on Euro. If you were to go look on Euro on this day, it cleared um, a good buy side liquidity pool. Again, what are we looking for after that happens? We're looking for price to either consolidate to continue or consolidate to reverse. So now that we have time and price on our side, we see SMT divergence on GBP. I personally look at all three. Okay. And you see that um, DXY cleared the previous day low and now it's pushing up. Okay. When you see this push up and you see a swipe of liquidity like this and you have SMT all over the board right here. Okay. Euro and DXY are correlated, but GBP is not. This is the only one that's not correlated with, with these two. So GBP would be the one you want to short. You can also short Euro if you're not confident in the GBP setup, but GBP will offer the most bang for your buck, the most reward, right? Because you're literally going short at the very top. You could short Euro here, anywhere in this area and place your stop above its high because since GBP swiped this high, Euro shouldn't swipe this high and DXY shouldn't go below this low because if it did, then everything would make higher highs. So as DXY pushed down and GBP pushed up on this candle and it cleared this liquidity, as you can see, when DXY pushes down, we're pretty far from the low and uh, GBP already made a higher high. DXY is not confirming it with a lower low. It's not reaching for this low. It's probably going to reach for higher prices. That's how you know this is a turtle soup entry. So you would want to go short at this high once it pierces it or at this candle's close right here and place your stop above this candle's high. Or if you look over to the left, if you want to be a little more safe, you can place your stop all the way above here, right? But if you were to zoom into the lower time frames, if you wanted extra confirmation for whatever reason, if it was like a big news day that's coming out or a big news day the following day, if you want extra confirmation, you can go on the lower time frames, look for breaks of structure and stuff like that. But the turtle soup entry and the turtle soup concept does not consist of you waiting for a market structure shift or a break of structure. You enter when you have time and price on your side, your higher time frame bias is aligning with that, and you have SMT divergence, for example, like this, right? Comes up, higher high, lower high on Euro, and then higher low on DXY. DXY is not confirming the lower low with GBP. So this is a discrepancy. This is SMT divergence in the London kill zone. So you could definitely place limits above these, or you could wait for the next candle to close. This pretty much works on all time frames. So it would look something like this. If you wanted to go short 
on this candle's close, you would place a short order here, market entry, and you would place your stop above this candle's high. And then again, you would target the opposing liquidity. You don't got to wait for a break of structure. You just target the opposing liquidity, which would be like this low here, that low there, and they all get hit within the kill zone and outside of the kill zone and in the New York kill zone. It even expands lower. Because remember what I said, London gives you a clue on what New York wants to do, right? We have the London expansion, New York continues. It's literally that simple, guys. That's what a turtle soup is. And look at that. That was a nice 43, 44 pip reward, risking six, seven pips. Again, you could place a limit order at one of these highs. Once you see GBP or whatever pair that you're watching going for some sort of liquidity and the other one's not, like at this candle right here, it's pretty obvious that Euro USD is not going to reach for this high like GBP USD is. So you could set a limit order right at the top and place your stop for the time being. You could place your stop up here. So it would look like something like this right here, right? If you were to place a limit right here at this top, at this high right here, right? For the time being, you can just set your stop all the way up here. Doesn't mean that's going to get hit, but you could set your stop all the way up there because sometimes price will just chill up here for a little bit and then it'll start moving down. So you could place your stop up here for the time being. And once this candle closes, you could place it at the top of it like this and then attack the opposing liquidity. That's pretty much it. That's the sauce. That's the turtle soup concept. That is a turtle soup. All you got to have is your higher time frame bias aligned. You got to have time on your side as well, like the kill zones or macros. If you're trading indices, I'm going to show you an example on indices in a moment. And you got to have SMT divergence confirming that whatever correlated pair you're watching is not reaching for the same liquidity because what the turtle soup is, is basically smart money taking out dumb money because dumb money are going to have stops up here and they're going to want to get out because they see this huge displacement candle reaching for this high. So they're going to trail their stops above this high. It's pretty much smart money getting into positions, taking out dumb money, and then it starts moving lower. Again, let's recap what we just said real quick, and I'll try to summarize it as simple as possible. What you want to wait for is time to be on your side, like the kill zone. If you're trading um, Forex, it'd be London and New York kill zone. In this case, we have it here, London kill zone. GBP expands up, huge displacement candle right here at London Open, as a matter of fact. On Euro, we have the same thing at London Open, huge displacement candle right here, right? But it is farther away from this high that GBP is piercing. So you can bet that Euro is probably not gonna take out this high like GBP just did, right? It attacked this high right here. Euro is pretty far away from that high. DXY is pretty far away from that low. So you can expect this is gonna be a turtle soup. So you can safely enter. Again, if you're a little scared, you can place your stop all the way up here for the time being and then move it once you start seeing displacements down. OK, it's pretty much it. Now let's go look at an example on indices. All right, guys. So for indices, I really only look at the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. But I look I'm looking at the futures chart here because I feel like it just gives you more accurate data, in my opinion. These are just reference charts for me. So just by looking at these two charts, I'm pretty sure you could tell by all the information I already gave you where the turtle soup entry is or where the turtle soup occurred. So first, our higher time frame bias, we want to make sure that's in check. Our higher time frame bias in this example is going to be bullish. So if we look at the daily real quick, let me go ahead and show you guys the daily chart on ESM. Let me go ahead and remove this. Does this look bullish or bearish to you guys? Does this look like price is going to reach for higher prices or lower prices? right? Our weekly swing points are right here and up here. Where does price look like it's going to go next? You think we're going to reach all the way down here? Or do you think we're going to take out this liquidity up here and then go down? What do you guys think? Obviously up, right? Price is suggesting that we're going to go up. So we have our higher time frame narrative and bias, which is bullish. We're looking for higher prices. We're looking for smart money to take out dumb money. So let's go back to the one minute. So we're in the New York kill zone. If you guys remember the New York kill zone for indices is going to be from 830 pre-market opening right here all the way to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you guys watch that time and price video, we are in a macro right here starting at 950 to 1010. Also, now we have time on our side, right? We're in the kill zone. We're in a macro. We have higher time frame bias as bullish. So we are looking for higher prices, right? And if you guys look here, in the morning, S&P swipe liquidity right here. Okay, so did NASDAQ. So we swiped our sell side liquidity 
we took out any stops that were below these lows right here. So now we're looking for opposing liquidity. It's very simple, guys. It's not hard. So all you got to do is look. The final thing that you have to look for is look for that SMT divergence. Right? That's all you got to look for, which is right here. You guys see this? Higher low. Lower low. Boom. So as NASDAQ cleared this low, you could have had set a limit right here. A buy limit. Just set a buy limit right there. And then once you see this candle close, immediately put your stop here. That's literally all you have to do. That's a turtle soup right there. Crazy, right? And if you were to set a limit there, you don't have to have a stop necessarily. You could place your stop wherever. If you look to the left, I'm pretty sure you could find a good place to put your stop. Personally, if I were setting limits right here, I would not put a stop. If I was looking for a turtle soup to occur, I would not put stops until I see what price action is going to do until we get this break of structure. That's when I would set a stop below this low. As you can see here, as NASDAQ cleared this low, S&P failed to make a lower low with the NASDAQ. So now you would target the higher time frame imposing liquidity, like on the 15 minute, one hour, uh, four hour, daily, etc. And that's literally all it is. Now, if you're looking back over here, right, and you're looking at this low on NASDAQ, right? which is this low on S&P 500 right here, this low right here. Right here, we do have S&T divergence, right? We have S&T divergence right here, right? We have S&P 500 making lower lows, but NASDAQ isn't making um, lower lows. So we have S&T divergence, but this is why time and price is so important. You gotta make sure that time is on your side, guys. Yes, we are in the kill zone, but where's the macro? Where's the second macro? Literally, this starts seven minutes after you wait for that macro. That's literally all you have to do. Make sure your higher time frame bias is in line. Make sure you have time on your side with price and look for the SMT divergence. Look for that discrepancy. And that's where turtle soup will happen. And then boom, target opposing liquidity. Literally that simple guys. You don't have to wait for a fucking break of structure or market structure shift. Once you get that break of structure or market structure shift, that's when you place or move your stops to the candle that swept liquidity and did the turtle soup. So yeah, that's pretty much what a turtle soup is. I showed you guys an example on Forex and I showed you guys an example on indices. I hope you guys take this and run with it. I haven't seen much uh, YouTube videos on turtle soup, but that is basically what it is. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video on turtle soup. That is what a turtle soup looks like. So remember guys, before you guys go out there and start making soups out of turtles, make sure you guys have your higher time frame bias or narrative. Make sure you guys have time aligning with price. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's the video before this one that I uploaded this week. And make sure you guys have the discrepancy, that SMT divergence. I also have a video on that on my channel as well. So if you guys learned something valuable here today, or if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, comment what you guys want to see next, and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on any more future videos. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next one.